Hey, yo, uh, welcome to the video. Uh, lost this audio, so I'm gonna have to dub it over. Um, I'm sure I was saying something really important here about what you're gonna see in this video. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's about polishing aluminum. Dibbity, dibbity. Yeah, we're gonna polish some aluminum. Uh, come with me and uh, watch how we do it. Great. All right, so if you take a look at these, uh, we're gonna polish these anniversary, Brunswick anniversary pool table castings, and we're gonna try and do it to a mirror-like finish. Uh, if you look at it, somebody probably had a whack at these uh, one other time, but you can see there's some deep scratches in here, but honestly, they're not in horrible condition. They're just not up to where they should be. So I do this exact same thing, polishing these exact same parts quite often. So I went as far as to build a jig that holds these fixed in place because honestly, half the battle is just holding these pieces still while you get uh, some sandpaper on them. Um, again here, I just have a jig, holds this nice and tight uh, while I, I go to work on them. Uh, but we're going to move on here and I'm going to show you the first tool I use. So it's a grinder with basically a glorified scotch pad uh, affixed to it. You can buy these at Blows or Orange Lows, whatever you choose. Uh, it's made by that Gator company. But um, this is how I start to remove all the real heavy stuff, uh, heavy scratches. You've got to be real careful here though because you can make a mess of things in a hurry. It moves a lot of material. Uh, obviously we're polishing aluminum here, a pretty soft metal. Uh, so you can, if you stop this, you can make a gouge. And you're going to see it in the final product, especially when you make these to a mirror finish. All right, so once you had a pretty good whack at it with that uh, grinder with the scotch brake pad on it, bang, you can see right away we got a pretty nice matte finish going here. Now there's some scratches in there that were left behind by that scotch brake pad. Uh, so the, the whole name of the game here is we're going to step it up to a finer, basically abrasive. This is a 320 wet dry sandpaper. You're going to want a big tub of water here. Basically what that water is going to do is it's going to allow the sandpaper not to build up. So it's going to wash those particles away on the sandpaper. Now, you have to just bear down and know that this is going to suck for a while, right? So the finish that you get on these pieces, there is a direct correlation with how much time you spend on each step of this process. Uh, there's no faking this. There's no rushing it. Uh, the whole name of the game here is to get out the scratches that were left behind by that scotch brake pad. So now we're taking that 320 and we're essentially making finer scratches than we previously did with that scotch brake pad on the grinder. Uh, so we're going to bear down here and we're going to sand for a while. Uh, you do have to switch sandpaper pretty often here because the aluminum does a pretty good job of uh, wearing that sandpaper out. Next step, obviously, we're just going to step up into the 400 grit sandpaper. So we just went from a 320 to a 400. And again, now we're just getting the finer scratches from the 320. We're taking them and making them smaller and finer scratches with that 400. Now that your arms are close to wet noodle status uh, from doing all that hand sanding, we get to take a break here and use uh, some machine power and let the, these wheels do some cutting work for us. Uh, so this is a loose sewn wheel. Uh, once you get it to about 400 sandpaper, there's no real reason to go any further, number one. Or you don't really need a sisal wheel, which is a tightly sewn wheel. You can go straight to a loose sewn wheel with some white buffing compound. The white buffing compound is simply a finer uh, abrasive than what we had on the 400 grit sandpaper. So we're going to load a little bit of com buffing compound, cutting compound onto that wheel. Don't load it up and cake it on there like crazy. You're going to want to do it often uh, in little amounts. Uh, so we're going to go ahead here and work this back and forth. You're going to build some temperature into this piece. So you see here that I put on some gloves to avoid uh, the piece gets hot when you're doing this. But you can already see what that white buffing compound is doing to that. It's making that mirror finish for us, taking away the scratches left behind by that 400 sandpaper. Uh, this is where the magic happens. This is where it starts, to, your hard work starts to pay off. So again, on this step, there's no cheating this. There's no cutting corners here. Direct result, how much time you put in here is what that finish is gonna look like on the, on the other end of this. So I like to break these pieces down into four quadrants, uh, work on a nice small corner at a time, just going back and forth, back and forth, adding compound, uh, and just really leveling everything out right now. Um, spend a little time here, get it right uh, before you move on to the next step. 
Now the next step in the process is we're going to switch wheels out. Uh, we're going to go to an even finer buffing compound. So this is a red jeweler's rouge. And one thing to note, when you're on the wheel here, when you're on the machine, I'm not pushing really hard here. I'm just applying nice light even pressure and going back and forth on it. Uh, let the machine do the work. Um, it's spinning at a high rate of speed. Just nice even pressure the whole way across. Uh, you don't need to really lean on it. The blue stone wheels will fold on itself. Uh, if you really lean on it too hard. So just, just to finish up here, I want to show you a final shot of what these look like after you spend some real time with them. Uh, you can see they polished up super and they look like a straight up mirror. Uh, that's what you're looking for. Um, so get out there, polish something. See you later.